So as I get close to home, it automatically detects my location and based on that we'll turn on the outside lights. And as you'll see, as I arrive home, the lights are on on the outside of the house. Again, as the garage door opens, it turns on the lights to the garage. And also, it will trigger off the lights through to the laundry as well, as it gets closer. Now, just going to demonstrate some of the motion sensored lights. So, as I go into the hallway, to the stairs, there's the stair lights, the lights come on. I'll come through to the lounger. In this case, it looks more like a laundry. Again, we'll have two lights that will trigger on, one there, one on the wall. Each of these lights will turn off as well. So again, as I move into the lounge area, it's unfortunately the fairly high focus, again, the dining room light will come on. And this next clip, I'm just going to demonstrate uh, one of the functions I've used using the uh, Foscam IP camera. Um, what I wanted to do is have uh, two presets defined, one for the camera pointing towards the door for when it opens, and a secondary one for pointing towards the uh, actual entrance, the window, um, and a side door that we have here. Um, you'll see just up in the top corner here, this is where the uh, IP camera is. Um, so what I did is I just did a little bit of a snoop to see what happens from the web interface to see what uh, URL it was calling to determine how I could set it to use preset 1 and preset 2. So in this demonstration here I'll uh, show you what happens when I press the door to open it. You can see that the camera has turned as the door opens. Now as a secondary for that, I've got another motion detector, which I'll trip as I walk out shortly, um, which will simulate what would happen when the car comes into the garage, which in that point would turn the, the camera back again. So as I move out, you'll see that the camera is turned back facing towards me. Uh, and that's how I've done the uh, function around that. Hi, next I'd like to do a demonstration of the voicemail function I've built using again the HS3 and HS Touch designer. You'll see in the top right hand corner up here, you'll see a voicemail section. Uh, has the caller, number, date, time, length, uh, number of messages, as well as buttons to do delete the message, to skip forward and back, as well as a play function. You see currently there are no messages on the screen, so what I'll do is demonstrate what happens when a phone call comes through. So I now call. For the purpose of this, I've hard-coded in a caller ID number for the fake that's going online. Incoming call from Mike Mobile. There we go. So you get a pop-up and a text-to-speech alert. I'll let it go to voicemail. Hi, this is Mike. I'm now leaving a test voicemail to demonstrate how this works. Thank you. Right, so I've hung up from the voicemail message there. Okay, I can go back to the same screen again. And if I'll do an update. Now it shows one message. If I click forward, it's now got the details up here. And I can hit play. Hi, this is Mike. I'm now leaving a test voicemail to demonstrate how this works. Thank you. So next I'm just going to demonstrate uh, the pop-up message that occurs uh, when a person comes home into the house. So in this case it's a, an event for my wife. Um, I've configured two variables. The first one is whether or not there's actually a voicemail message, which you can see down here. One based on the location of the person. Um, that's using a combination of GPS over the internet or over mobile data. Um, also combined with broad, uh, Bluetooth and also Wi-Fi to use to work out whether they're home or not. Uh, and then two motion sensors, so one that they've come through the garage or the front entrance, 
um, and one when they've moved into the kitchen. Now get with Given I'm already home at this stage, what I'll do is manually trigger this event. So there's a 15 second delay for this. And it'll come up with its other pop-up. So as you walk into the house, knows you're home. You've got mail. There we go, there's the you've got mail message. From there the person can sort of either click into it, which clears it, or leave it and it'll eventually go back. Okay, from here this is just demonstrating the music functions, so I've built custom screens for various different rooms in the house where I've got some squeeze box devices, so here family room, um, going back to the study we we're in, um, again formal lounge, I've colour coded it based on the room so it's easy to identify where, which room the, the device is playing, um, so in this case here I'll demonstrate playing music in the study, um, up in the top corner here it's got a an icon to show whether or not the power's on for it. I have elected to use, as you see across the top here, um, buttons for each playlist. So I've discovered that my usage tends to be more playlist based or trigger based. So I can either use things like Pandora um, or a specific playlist of music. I don't tend to try and search for a specific song. And being a wall, uh, a wall mounted item, it's the kind of thing you want to press and walk away. So if we want family and uh, music in the house, we can press a button and it'll start playing. So from here it's currently paused. I can hit play and then the music will start. I can change the volume. In the background you'll hear the music. Again there's a sync function here as well which comes with the squeeze box. So it enables multiple devices uh, to be synced up in terms of timing. Um, so in this case I'll just demonstrate syncing between the study and the formal lounge. So I can turn sync on. I've used a script to do this. I didn't find any particular easy way to make this work. Um, I'll go to the formal lounge now. I will turn that device on. It's now gone on. It's now synced up. And if I turn that up, you'll now hear the music. Again in the study. I can now move through the two rooms and you hear the same music. Room number one. Through to the study. Room number two. One last thing I've done for a bit of a laugh. I've uh, got a wall mounted tablet nearby to my study door. Um, having a bit of fun, I thought I'd make some sound effects for when the doors open, so I'll just demonstrate. So it's got that creaky door sound. Um, as far as the door goes, there's just a sensor that's in the door, one of the recess sensors. And equally, when you close the door, the sound of a padlocking. Thought it was great.